The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Earlier this month, property management company Satik launched a shipping container shopping center known as 27 Boxes. Megan van Weinhardt has the story. Hoping to revive the consumer side of the bohemian suburb of Melville, 27 Boxes was developed as a more meets market, comprising 102 shipping containers. The center hosts about 80 stores selling clothing, decor and art, as well as restaurants and coffee shops. Satik CEO Paul Lapham explains the idea behind the centre in 3rd Avenue. So the original idea came from, from a project we saw in London called Box Park, which is a very exclusive upmarket centre built entirely out of shipping containers. And my team said if they can build this in London, then isn't this something that can also work here in Johannesburg or in South Africa? So that was the concept, and then this piece of land presented itself as being available for development, which is in Melville, which is a very vibey, bohemian district. And really just the, the two came together, that there was a suitable site for the concept that we'd had in mind, and the concept of using shipping containers really lent to creating affordable shops for people, affordable value for money shops for, for small retailers. The retailers are really a mix of what I'd call design kind of stores and food food stores. Design is everything from jewellery to clothes to speciality items to decor and so on. And then on the food side, everything from Philly cheesesteak through to the Thai food place on the other side of the centre, for example. So there's a range of different tenants that have taken up space. But Melville is known for this, its student life, but there's also a lot of families who live around here. We're hoping this will appeal to a cross-section of people who are just looking to have a good time, somewhere interesting to go to, somewhere interesting to shop. Uh, and we think that, you know, given the, the kind of stores we've got here, we appeal to a very wide target market. Melville's long been known as one of the, the great high streets of Johannesburg and it's had its, its up times and its down times. Um, and it's a reality that I think more people go to the shopping centres to do their monthly shopping because of the convenience and as a result the small retailers often lose out. But at the same time we've seen a real upsurgence in Saturday markets and night markets and so on here in South Africa and around the world in point of fact where people are saying we want to go somewhere as an outing not just as a shopping uh, to, to a shopping destination. So this particular centre we're hoping will appeal to, to people who are wanting to both shop, find something interesting, have a day out, enjoy themselves, relax um, and create a buzz and a vibe that, that people just enjoy. While 27 Boxes offers tenants short-term rental options of about three months, adding to the market feel, it also offered longer-term rentals of between two and three years. Average rent is about 3,000 rand a month. If you look at our stores on a per square meter basis, they're probably not as cheap as people imagine. But the concept here is if you make available small stores to, to, to retailers, they can manage out of a small store. And, and if you look around, it's amazing how creative people have been in using the space that they've got. The idea was to attract a group of tenants who would be hesitant to commit to, to bigger rentals without knowing if their shop would be a success. And the fact that we fully rented out here, I think, speaks to the fact that we set the rentals just right. You know, it's a, as a landlord you want your centre to be successful, as a tenant you want the landlord to be successful because it means more people coming through through the particular store. What we don't want to do is end up in a situation where we price the small tenants out of the centre. Um, that's really important to us. So they need to make enough money to, to, to be able to make a profit as well as pay their suppliers, including us as the landlord. We have parking available in the centre for 200 cars. Uh, Melville has probably five or six hundred cars that park in the street independently of our own centre uh, at any given, given point in time. Um, we've already seen a lot of interest on Saturdays and Sundays and a lot of people walking through, some looking, some buying. So we were actually expecting a, a really good turnout, particularly as spring arrives. I mean spring's around the corner from now. So we're expecting the centre to be really full and we're, we're hoping 
you know, it's a fine line. We, we want it to be full and, and well attended, but not so full that people don't want to come here because there's nowhere to sit and, and they have to line up in queues. So time will tell. Other news making headlines this week, a signal process technique developed by the University of Pretoria is set for commercial testing. Minister in the Presidency Jeff Khadebe says user pay infrastructure funding is critical in light of an on-budget resource constraint. And Transnet says its take or pay contracts offer volume cover during a weak commodity climate. Having developed a new signal processing technique for the vibration monitoring and testing of turbo machinery, the University of Pretoria's Centre for Asset Integrity Management Research Facility aims to create industry partnerships to develop this technique to maturity and commercialisation. What we are trying to do is to develop techniques based on vibration measurement whereby we can monitor in a non-intrusive way uh, online the vibration of turbo machines and then establish whether the machines are physically sound. The importance of techniques like these uh, is because of the fact that turbo machinery are often only meant or are only opened uh, say once in six years which of, of course makes it very difficult to determine exactly what the integrity of the machine is. So what we are trying to do here is to find online methods whereby you can determine what the condition of the machine is without opening the machine up. Minister in the Presidency Jeff Khadebe has defended the user pay principle as one of the mechanisms to finance critical infrastructure projects. Given this constraint to financing infrastructure through on budget spending, we need to expand off budget financing and deploy it in a wide range of projects in order for off budget financing to be viable alternative. We need to get the mix right in terms of paying for infrastructure once developed between taxpayer contributions and the user pay system. This is important because many infrastructure projects have both social and commercial components and therefore require a hybrid financing as well as repayment approach. State-owned freight logistics group Transnet is budgeting for continued growth in coal and iron ore export volumes in 2015-16, despite weak commodity market conditions. We've budgeted, for instance, export coal uh, that we would do um, 77 um, million tons uh, in the current financial year, um, and iron ore that would do about 62 uh, million tons. A budget. Um, is correct at the time when you finish the budget. Um, uh, five minutes after you finish the budget, the budget is wrong. We have signed uh, very good take or pay agreements with uh, all the coal exporting parties. Um, so we at least have an expectation that 95% of what is planned will be raised and that it will be made available. Um, and that um, if it doesn't uh, become available, then um, um, at least we will be compensated for it um, uh, as Transnet. <clears throat> so, um, uh, at least uh, in as far as that is concerned, um, we, we've got a little bit of that covered. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.